This is a sheer <coughs> Likuti Sichas, Chelik of Base, the 22nd volume of Likuti Sichas, the portion of Emoir, the first Sicha. In the mitzvah of Sfiris Emer, the mitzvah of counting the Emer, which we are commanded on in this parsha, in Parsha Emer, it says, Svartem lochem imochaz Shabbos. You should count from the day after Shabbos, meaning the day after Yom Tov of Pesach, from the day that you bring the Emer offering. You count until the morrow of the seventh week, which means you count seven times seven, forty-nine, and you're counting till the fiftieth day. So the concept of Sfiris Emer is according to many commentaries some of the commentaries and poskim a preparation and a hachshara to the holiday of Shavuos the time of the mountain Torah, the time when the Torah is given to use the Lashon of the Chinuch the foremost commentary who gives reasons for mitzvahs he writes as follows we were commanded to count from the day after the Yom Tov of Pesach till the day of the giving of the Torah Lahara is ben Avshenu to show in our souls. Hachefetz Hagodol, the great desire. El Hayyem Anichbad Belibenu to the very honorable day in our hearts that we await. We await it keevend Yishaf Tzel, just like a servant waits for the shadows of the late afternoon and evening to be able to finish his work, and he's constantly counting. When will that desired time come that he can go out to freedom? Because when a person counts, what it shows, it's indicative that his entire desire and his, so to speak, pining and waiting is to get to that time that he's counting towards. That's what counting is about. And this, and so we're counting to the giving of the Torah and Shavuos. This content and this concept of Sfirah is also relevant to Halacha. As this is brought as a reason in several poskim, why one of the reasons we don't make a Shechiyanu for Sfirah Sa'imah. In other words, <coughs> every mitzvah that comes from time to time, we make a Shechiyanu thanking Hashem for the mitzvah, for having kept us alive till this time that we can do this new thing. For example, it comes again the time to, to shake the lulav on sukkahs. First day sukkahs, we make a, a shaykh and we thank Hashem that we're alive to make the bracha, to do this mitzvah once again. It's a constant, but we don't have a shaykh So the mitzvah, Sfirah the first time it comes, second night of Pesach, we should be making a shaykh So one of the reasons given is that um, that brings in, a, in, a, in the Hora. The one of the reasons is because it's the Sefira is actually we're going to make a Shachyon on Shvuz. It's a lead up to Shvuz. But here is another one of the answers, says the Rebbe. What does it mean to count? To count means that you're, so to speak, trying to get through this period in order to get to the one you're waiting for. The worker, let, let, perhaps we can give the example kids waiting till our holidays, school, hol- school vacation, school holidays. They're counting the days. It's not the days they're excited about. They're excited to finish the day and to get closer to the holiday. Shechiyonu is about being excited about being here today, doing the mitzvah today. So on the one hand, Sefir Sa'imer is an introduction, is a stepping stone to the real action, to Shavuos. It says that nonetheless we see that the mitzvah of Sefir Sa'imer is not just a... a uh, getting by something. It's a mitzvah with a shleimus. It has a wholesomeness. First of all, in the time of Esau Mikdash, for sure, the mitzvah say the Isa to count from the bringing of the Eimer. We have opinions today. There's opinions that it's the Rabban on the Shulchan Aruch brings because we don't actually bring the Eimer offering on the Esau Mikdash. It's only a Zeichel in Mikdash, a remembrance of the Esau Mikdash where we counted the Eimer, the second Pesach, and then we count the Eimer. But regardless, we make a bracha today as well. And more than that, there's a mitzvah every single day for every Jew, Sfaratim, that every person has to count Sfira. And then, that achieves the coming of Shavuos. It's, it's not just getting through the days. On the one hand, therefore, we have two, we have a, a two things here going on at the same time. On the one hand, it's a, um, it's a preparatory 
mitzvah for Shavuos. On the other hand, it has its own energy. It's a mitzvah every single day. So those two things, where it's leading up to something, on the other hand, it has its own identity, is what the Rebbe is going to refer back to also all the way at the end of the Sicha. So hold that those that thing in your in your mind. Base. According to that, what we explain, what the concept of Sefer Seimer is, what the Geder of Sefer Seimer is, the parameters of Sefer Seimer are, we'll be able to understand something that would be elusive to us, and that is, why the Alter Rebbe put the Sefer Seimer at the end of his Siddur? So, at this point in the Sicha, I, I found that I and others who I've learned with have got confused here. There was a um, there was a change, not sure how many years ago, 10, 15, 20 years ago, where they, in the in the Siddur we use, the Siddur to heal us Hashem, they put this first time right after Mayrev, right after the daily Mayrev. It used to be somewhere in the back of the Siddur, together with the, the Tefillahs, together with the prayers of of the of the years of the yearly cycle. Um, here the Rebbe is going to be addressing that Sefer Sa'im is at the end of the Siddur. So, what do you mean? Now we moved it, and it's supposed to be at the end of the Siddur. Well, we, why do we have it? Why did the printers decide to print it now, all the way in the beginning? <laughs> when we talk here, the Rebbe is going to be talking about the Alter Rebbe Siddur. We shouldn't confuse it with what we use now to heal us Hashem. In other words, the Alter Rebbe compiled a list of tefillahs, and he did so from, the tradition has it, 60 versions of the Arizal's Nusach. Okay, so it's different, different versions of the Arizal's Nusach. And the Alter Rebbe chose and, and made a refined Siddur, a Siddur with Diktuk and, and all the other details that the Alter Rebbe did. And he compiled it as a, a Siddur. Then, in that, within that Siddur, the Alter Rebbe didn't, repeat all the prayers again. In other words, he says, if I, if he did the Amidah for Shachas, he doesn't have to print it again by Mincha. And that Siddur, with the order of the prayers of the entire year, the Rebbe is going to tell us, Sfirah Sa'im is the last thing in that Siddur. Now that Siddur is, is we know today, most, um, uh, uh, we know today, as a Siddur Torah Eir. The Siddur that the Rebbe would daven with, coming every day to davening, was a Siddur Teira Eir. It's the Alter Rebbe Siddur, and you indeed have to go back and forth in that Siddur because the Tfilis are not printed again. Right? If it was printed already, it's not that the, the, the Amidas are not printed again each time for each prayer, and so on, and many other things. That's the Alter Rebbe Siddur classically. And about that Siddur, the Rebbe brings in a footnote that the Rebbe Rashab, when the Siddur was printed, the Rebbe Rashab had comments that... Uh, nothing should have been changed from the way the Alter Rebbe set it out, even when it seemed to be technicalities, because the Alter Rebbe definitely had a Seder. The Siddur we daven in today, Siddur Tehillah Sashem, is a Siddur that everything is spelled out in a very easy way. It's meant to be user-friendly. It's not the, it's the Alter Rebbe's Nusach, but it's not, so to speak, when you say the Alter Rebbe Siddur, that's Siddur Torah or one or two other versions of the Siddur with Chassidus. But that's not Tehillah. Tehillah Hashem is the user-friendly Siddur. So when making the Siddur user-friendly, whenever it was, 20 years ago or so, they decided, let's make it even more user-friendly. And instead of, or at least in some of the prints, instead of going after Mayrev and always for 49 days looking to the back of the Siddur to try and find his first image, they put it right after Mayrev because for those 49 days, except for the seven times when it comes on Shabbos, the Sfir Saimer is, is, is right after Mayrev. So, that's just a little introduction. <clears throat> now the Rebbe says, we know the great diuk in, in the Seder. Well, let me start again from base. According to what we explained about Sfir Sa'imer, we'll be able to explain the reason why the Alter Rebbe put Sfir Sa'imer in his Seder at the end of the Seder. So it's known the great diuk in the Seder of the Alter Rebbe and everything that he did. Especially when we talk about a Seder. Seder Seder hat fila. The order of davening, so it's the order of davening for the entire year. So we understand that the orderliness of it is exact. Tachlis adiyuk. The exactness in the order is more emphasized when you see that the Alter Rebbe chose a different order in terms of the contents of the Siddur than the standard Siddurs of the Arizal till that date. <coughs> the other Siddur of the Arizal 
And, and Al Rebbe's Siddur, of course, is Al Rebbe says his Siddur is according to the Nusach of the Arizal. It says the Rebbe and the other Nusachs of the Arizal, and in brackets, the right Shira Isi, the ones that I've seen, the end of the order of davening for the entire year is not with Sfir Sayyim, like the Al Rebbe put it, but it's with the meditations, the kavonis, the things you have to have intention for when you have the tefillahs of Shmini Atzeres and Simchas Teira. So you could explain simply, says the Rebbe, the reason the Al-Tarebbe changed this order of the sequence of tefillahs is because the Al-Tarebbe said that we know he made it, it should be Shovel Lechol Nefesh, it should be for all kinds of people, not like the Siddhar Rizal. Siddhar Rizal was intended for those that understand kavonis, it was intended for a select few that are Kabbalist, Kabbalistically inclined. And we also know that for that reason, the Alter Rebbe doesn't put in, like other Ariz al Sidurim, all the details about the intentions you have to have uh, on the various names of Hashem with the spheres and so on. If you st- pick up a standard Siddur of the Arizal, you'll find that it's uh, it's got a lot of stuff there that's Kabbalah, what you need to think about when you say this name of Hashem and so on and so forth. The Alter Rebbe didn't put it in. The Alter Rebbe has according to those Kabbalahs, but just what we actually say. Because it's a siddur that's for everybody. Pick up the siddur and tadavan, not for those that understand only Kabbalah. That's why we could say that the order of the Alter Rebbe siddur works according to what makes, to the general rule of Torah. What's the general rule of Torah? General rule of Torah is Tadir Vishayne Tadir Tadir Kedem. Something that's frequent and sub- always comes for something that's less frequent. So let's take the times of the year. So in the times of the year, um, so in, in, in davening, we start with the daily davening. And then it goes the Shabbos davening. Now when we get to the order of events during the year, we follow the order of the year. First um, Hanukkah, then Purim. Then after Purim comes Nisan, Pesach, Karim, Pesach, Agadosh, Pesach, and then Svir and that's the end. Um, the Rebbe didn't say here, Roshani Yom Kippur, I'm assuming that 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 comes before Hanukkah and Purim. Akoponim, since the Alter Rebbe wrote his Siddur, with, according to the Paiskim of Halacha, and at the same, in other words, he's writing it for everybody, so it goes according to the Seder of Halacha, which is frequent, not frequent, frequent first, and then following the sequence of the year. At the same time, though, the Alter Rebbe gave his Asiz Nusach according to the Kavonis of the Arizal, the meditations that the Arizal has in there. However, he didn't he didn't actually quote those kavanas because it shouldn't be throwing off. It should be um, accessible to every person, even to those that don't understand and are not able to actually have those secret uh, deep kavanas. So we therefore understand <clears throat> that if the only thing is that Tal Rebbe omitted actually writing the kavanas, so then the content should also, though, fit the Pneumius. So yes, we gave a reason why Alpinigla, perhaps for the same at the end, but how does that fit with Said? So therefore, said the Rebbe, it, 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 it would be proper to say that Sfir Sa'ima comes at the end of the Siddur because in the Sfir Sa'ima, there's some kind of a, a, a grand finale, so to speak. There's an emphasis of what the sum total and the main point of davening is, according to Nigla, and also according to Sod, which would mean that even though the Alter Rebbe is writing a Siddha of Arizal, he changes the order from the other Arizalists, so to speak, because also al Sod, also in the, in the realm of, 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 of the Pneumius Ater, it also, there's a point to be made about Sfir Semi being at the end. Says the Rebbe, it's not just that in Nigla and in Sod there's a point for Sfir being at the end. Shleim says the Rebbe that there's this special concept about Sfir Saim is not just is in two aspects in the Chefze and the actual object in the uh, identity of Sfir Saim of Tefillah and Sfir Saim that there's a reason why somehow they correlate and Sfir Saim is the grand finale of Tefillah and that's why it's the end and also in the Gavra and the way the effect it has on the person the person's approach to it. As we'll say later on, we remember there's Gavran and Chefsa, there's the person who does it and there's what's achieved. In both fields, there's going to be a reason why Svirsa will be at the end. Gimel, the mitzvah of Tefillah, now the Rebbe gives us, now the Rebbe gives us a deeper look into the concept of Davani. Mitzvah Tefillah is called, <coughs> the language of the Rambam, 
Mitzvah Saseil is Palav Chaliyah. We have a, a positive commandment to daven every day. Shnei Mitzvah says, "Va'avadet Emes Hashem Alekechem." You shall serve Hashem. Mipiash Mu'alam. Do we learn from Teshuvah Bal Pesha? Avoda Zui Tefila. That Avoda means davening, serving Hashem with your heart. It says, "La'av Dei B'Chalav Avchem." Shnei Mitzvah also says, "La'av Dei B'Chalav Avchem." Serve Hashem with all your heart. And the Chachamim said, "Ezoya Avodah Shvulev." What does it mean? Working. Serving Hashem with your heart, Zutvila. That's Tfila. And in a um, elsewhere, the Ramam says that the mitzvah say Tfila is lavid as Hashem bechol yem Tfila to serve Hashem every day in davening. In other words, davening is work to work with your heart. So one of the explanations of Pinigla that what does it mean that Tfila davening is an Indian of a bit of work, working with your heart. So you could learn that this from the language of the Rambam himself. The Rambam says the obligation of this mitzvah is chi of mitzvah zukachu. She he adam mischanen. A person should beseech or mispalal and pray b'chol yom every day. Umagid shivchesh lachesh baruch hu. Recite, relate the praiseworthiness of Hashem for His greatness. V'acha kach shel tzurachem and then ask for His needs. Shu tzurach lemitch He needs bebakosha ubitchina with a feeling of request and entreating, a beseeching, entreating, asking soulfully, asking with, with feeling. And then wrap it up by giving thanks to Hashem for the good that He's done Him. So actually, tefillah, when we say default, the word tefillah, it's Amida. And if you look at our, of course, at the Shemena Esre, at the uh, Amida, we say that Shemena is, is built with three brachas giving thanks to Hashem. The bulk of the content of the um, the next um, 13 brachas are asking for requests to bestow upon us all the things we need. And then we give thanks, and the last three brachas we give thanks to Hashem again. So that's standard. When we talk about tefillah, it's Amidah. The Amidah is thanking, thanking at the end, asking in the middle but the asking needs to be in a way that one feels like one is imploring beseeching asking hashem soulfully with meaning for that which he needs so the explanation is like this says the devil mitzvahs generally we can talk about two kinds of mitzvahs there's mitzvahs the doing mitzvahs whether it's doing a physical deed like putting on tzitzes putting on tefillin or whether it's doing a minor deed like by talking like reading the megillah relating the Haggadah, speaking about going out of Egypt, it's a mitzvah to talk about it. So the main fulfillment of the mitzvah is the actual speaking, the speech. Then we have the mitzvahs that are the mitzvahs that are dependent on the heart. For example, loving Hashem, fearing Hashem. It doesn't matter. Today we have people say, I love you, love you, love you, without any feeling. You don't fulfill the mitzvah of loving Hashem by saying, Hashem, I love you. No. It's a developing a feeling of the heart. These are the mitzvahs called chayvais halavavais. They're an obligation, the duties of the heart. About it's, and, 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 and they're about what you feel, what you think. Mit, the mitzvah of tefillah is unique, that even though it's a combination of both, when you love Hashem, you, the mitzvah of loving Hashem is coming to that feeling. When you read the Megillah, the mitzvah is to read the Megillah. What is the mitzvah of speech? What is the mitzvah of feeling? Tefillah has a combination of both. We have to verbalize, enunciate our, our, our prayer. Tefillah has to be bedibur. It's not enough to just think in your heart. Um, on the other hand, tefillah needs to be, in order for it, in order, the actual deed of the mitzvah of tefillah also requires a soulfulness. There needs to be meschanen or You need to be beseeching, asking Hashem for, 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 for mercy, so to speak. The feeling needs to be there that you're beseeching, you're asking Hashem. That feeling of mischanen, to, to beseech, to implore Hashem, that's got to do with your heart. That's, that's not a, 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 a lip service. So you have to enunciate prayer, but you have to feel prayer. Okay, so in many mitzvahs, we have this concept that you need to be with kavana, there needs to be intentionality, there needs to be mindfulness. Right? But, and sometimes you haven't even fulfilled your obligation of doing the mitzvah if you didn't have intention while doing the mitzvah. However, 
that's two things. There's the mitzvah that you did, the shell, and then there's the intention of the mitzvah. But it's not actually a, a part of the mitzvah itself. However, when it comes to um, when it comes to davening, so in order for the actual davening to be davening, for it to actually have a a, a to be a a, a um, to be a, a um, to have the identity to have the the um, to be a tefillah, it needs to be with entreating. It needs to be with a feeling of asking Hashem for something. The heart needs to be involved. And for that, in other words, let, let's, let's, um, let me says here in the order, even though we find also by, um, we're talking here, let, let's, let's talk here particularly, let's, um, speak here about two things. A, we're talking about Amido, when we're asking for what we need. B, we're talking here about the feeling of the heart, not necessarily about understanding every word we're saying. There's, what we say, a tefillah without, a, um, without intention is like a body without a soul. That, that would be meaning about without knowing exactly what, what you're saying in every word and so on. Then it's a body without a soul. The Rebbe is saying here the actual body of tefillah is not even a body if you don't have a feeling of your heart. We'll refer to this, seems to be coming out from the Horus of the Rebbe. There's a Kavana Klolis, the, later, the Rebbe later refers to uh, a famous of Chaim Briska on the Rambam. With the Rambam, <coughs> but I'm just referring to this because you should know there's a lot going on in the Horus as always and uh, beyond the scope perhaps my scope right now and the scope of this uh, of this year to, to go into that. But generally speaking, there's a knowing exactly what word you're saying, and then there's the feeling of the heart in which you are davening when you're asking for what you need, that you're turning to Hashem soulfully, you're turning to Hashem in a way of beseeching Him. And the Rebbe's making the point here that without the feeling of the heart of knowing you're asking from Hashem in other words the kavana close the general notion that you're standing before Hashem and asking Him imploring Him for something without that feeling the actual tefillah is not even a tefillah so in order to get to that stage you need to remove from your heart all the other thoughts you need to view yourself as standing before the Shekhinah and then, by the time of davening, you have to be having the feeling of asking and imploring Hashem for what you need. Without that, not just did the person not fulfill his mitzvah of davening, the actual words you're saying are not, are not tefillah. Tefillah needs to have a soulfulness. So this concept of the tefillah, so you're standing before Hashem, <coughs> And asking for something, needs to be, your soul needs to be vested there. This concept that without actually knowing and feeling that you're standing before Hashem and asking, the tefillah is not even a, 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 a is not even an object, a chefza of tefillah. We see a parallel in Sefirah Sahim. The Alter Rebbe says you can count the sphere in any language you understand. But if you don't understand the language you count it in, even if you said the words in Hebrew, if you don't understand what day you're counting, you haven't fulfilled your obligation. Since you haven't, you know, counting is about is about identifying what day you're in. If you didn't understand, then that ain't zus klal. It's not at all accounting. Since the artist Rebbe points out from the Alter there's opinions that if you say um, the Bricha Samozen, for example, even in Hebrew without understanding, you you, you did the mitzvah. With Svir Sa'imah, there's no opinion like that. If you did, you need to, counting is about knowing what day you're counting. That's count. What does counting mean? Counting means you've identified what's the difference before you count and after you count. Once you've counted, you know what day it is. You've stated what number day it is. If you don't understand what you say, what day it is, so you didn't count. In other words, part of the actual Part of the actual mitzvah of Kansas is the knowledge, not just the saying. 
It's the knowledge of what day it is. Just like we said about tefillah, part of the actual experience of tefillah is not just the saying what you what you're asking for, but it's this, the, the 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 feeling the person has that he's asking for something. Dalit. So since the mitzi is the actual object of tefillah, <coughs> is created through the kavana, through this the, the the work of the person with his heart to feel that he's asking Hashem. So we understand. Is moving as a cholerish is there shinui vel chaveret in the gavra? So the first change that needs to happen if it's about the person feeling is in the person who's davening and his introduction and preparation to davening. So also with that, there is a correlation with svirsa emer. Why? How? Tfila, as we said, the main thing of tfila is the amida. What does amida mean? I mean, it's a stand. It means a person stands like a servant in front of his master before Hashem, and he views himself as if he's standing before Hashem's holy presence, the Shekhinah. And in that instance, when he sees himself as standing before the Shekhinah, he entreats, mischan and mispal, he entreats and implores Hashem. In other words, he becomes a metzias of a mispal, he becomes kind of a, a, he transforms into a, a person who's beseeching Hashem. When a person rids his mind, empties his mind of all other thoughts, other than the fact that he's standing before Hashem, and he entreats and implores Hashem. So in that sense, he becomes elevated to a different place. In other words, there, there's a difference and there's a, a novelty now in the person who's davening. He's not the same preoccupied person as he was before. He's now a person who's transformed into a communicator with Hashem. And this we find by Sefer Sa'imer also. And we all say... Do you feel it or not? That you can tell me later. But every Yid says simply in his tefillah after davening, what have we been just doing? You commanded us, Hashem, to count Tzvi to purify us from our negativity, from our impurity. As it says in your Torah, to count the seven days, so that we, the souls of the Jewish people, should be clean from their grime, so to speak. So, when you daven, when you prepare yourself a daven, you stand for Hashem soulfully, there's a transformation that takes place in the person. I swear to say, there's also, by knowing what day you're counting, there's a kind of a, a cosmic, so to speak, Hashem's powerful effect on you is that it, it, it purifies us. Hey, the connection. This connection we're talking about is all connected with the fact that the person, there's a connection between tefillah and tefillah, and the person has to be prepared and knowledgeable and aware of what he's doing. But then there's another difference, there's another connection, and that is tefillah is different than other mitzvahs in as much as there's a a, a, a a desired outcome that seems to be part of tefillah. Like this. Most mitzvahs, the main thing is doing the mitzvah. You want to do it properly, do it with the kavana, with the intentionality, and with that, that's it. Then you did. Then you did the whole mitzvah. You put on tefillah. That's it. You did your part. By tefillah, what is tefillah? Tefillah is imploring Hashem. Okay, going to the amida. It's imploring Hashem. From one hand, your job is to entreat Hashem, to, to beseech Hashem. What are you beseeching for? You're asking the needs that you have. Hashem should fulfill your needs. The needs you have are part of your prayer. A person has a need for, for health. He's not feeling well. He damages to Hashem asking for health. Becoming healthy is, is, is the intention of his tefillah. That, that's what his tefillah is, to get healthy. On the other hand, Fulfilling the mitzvah of tefillah has nothing to do with whether or not his re- request was was re- fulfilled. It's about asking Hashem. What Hashem answered, if he fulfilled it, it doesn't take away from whether or not he davened properly. Whether or not it was fulfilled doesn't indicate on whether his davening was proper. The meila, in other words, there's two parts to tefillah. 
there's tefillah is really feeling that you need this thing and asking Hashem for this thing and in a sense if I didn't get it then the tefillah wasn't complete but on the other hand no 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 that's not the case with the tefillah I do my part I asked but Hashem what Hashem does that's that doesn't have anything with, with tefillah for example you put on tefillah it's just it's all about you putting on tefillah there's no so to speak uh, um, with tefillah it's not just about me asking it's Part of my tefillah is I want to actually see the fulfillment of the thing. On the other hand, the mitzvah of tefillah really ends once you've asked. With Sefir Sa'im, we have this same kind of um, balance here. Sefir Sa'im is a mitzvah that's it's a preparation for Shavuos. Especially the Zohar explains that the counting of the seven, uh, we say it in the, in the Tikkun Shavuos, that the, the counting of the seven weeks is like the counting of the seven clean days before a woman goes to the mikvah. So it's like the Jewish people is preparing themselves to go into the chuppah of Matan Ter and Chag by counting seven days, in this case, seven weeks. In other words, so counting, part of the counting is that there's an intended destination, which is Shavuos, that the counting achieves. On the other hand, the counting of every day is its own mitzvah. But, but, but what is the mitzvah, Sur Seymour? Waiting and... and, 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 and Pining away, so to speak, having a desire to get to Matan Teira, but just having that feeling of desiring Matan Teira, even before Matan Teira, that, that's a mitzvah, and it's a very big objective. It's a main Indian. Sfir Sa'ima has another powerful effect, even before you get the what what Sfir Sa'ima is building up to and, and asking for, which is Shavuos. You have the purification, as we said, this verse it purifies the yid from his tumor. And it emphasizes, what this emphasizes is the maila that the, of, of the avayda of the yid, in and of itself, even before seeing the result of that avayda. But there's two things. Again, by tefillah, there's the result of your prayer and there's the actual prayer. So you're very mindful of the result you want. But on the other hand, your mitzvah is davening. Sfir Sa'imir, we're mindful on the prize at the end of the game, the Shavuos, but the Aveda is right now, count today. And that's a beginning and end. So according to, so you see with that, the Tefillah and the Sfir Sa'imir have these two components that are that are identical. Vav, now that we've identified that there's what's achieved through what you're doing, and there's the actual doing that you're doing without, without being mindful of or having your eye on what you're achieving, or being worried about what you're achieving, just doing what you have to do. Now we can explain the difference between the Siddhar Rizal and the Siddhar al Rebbe. Even though, as we said, the al Rebbe did write his Siddhar to be exact according to the covenant of Rizal. But you see the difference right at the beginning of this story. The Siddhar of the Rizal begins with Klolo Stikan Valiya Salem. It's the, the general rectification and elevation of the worlds. The Siddhar of the al Rebbe starts with you should know the great advantage for getting up at midnight etc a person should try and get up at midnight at, uh, at some nights in the nights that he's able to be from those who are servants of Hashem so the Arizal's Siddur starts off with telling you the global picture. The al Rebbe Siddur says, telling you how you can be, the person can be a server of Hashem. The explanation of this is, according to the Pnimi Yisanyanim, what becomes expressed in the Siddur the Arizal is, is um, the Arizal introduces in his Siddur to those select few who are able to understand and able to have in mind these kavones and yichudim, the, the special meditations that the Arizal is going to talk about. So, when you talk about that, the, the, the tefillah is not just about what the person is doing, the elevation the person gets through Davin Tashem. It's also and actually mainly talking about the achieved desire, the achieved res, the desired result from Davin, which is the elevation of all the worlds. And this also when the worlds have their elevation and get aligned, so to speak, cosmically with Hashem's energy, that becomes the source of all the hamshachas, of all the drawing downs, which get drawn down, both physically and spiritually. And when things are aligned properly, 
the person who's, 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 who's versed in the Kabbalah is, so to speak, having intentions and aligning, then Hashem's energy gets drawn down in a way where also the physicality gets healed. The, 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 what we're davening for can get achieved. The sick can get healed and the rains can come. And <clears throat> therefore, at the Sfiris Ha'imad, which Sfiris Ha'imad really highlights the, the service, the avoid of a person. Every Jew counts. But that's not the grand finale of the Siddur in the Siddur of the Arizals. In the Siddur of the Arizals, the main thing is what we've done for the world, how, how, how the Tefillah has, has actually brought its intended result. So f- the end, the grand finale first is Shmini Yatzer Sim Chasteri. Shmini Yatzer Sim Chasteri is after the whole period of the Chagim. Shani Yom Kippur and then um, first the Shalish Regalim, which are the three, you know, the three holidays, and then Shani Yom Kippur, and then it, the grand finale, Shmini Yatzer Sim Chasteri. Because that's the the, the 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 end game, so to speak. That's when all the amshachas, all the drawing downs that need to come down from above, get drawn down below. Can I perhaps use an, an analogy? Uh, again, I have to be careful when using analogies and explaining the Rebbe Sicha. There's the, the there's the pilots, and the, the navigators, and the co-pilots in the cockpit. And there's the people in the plane. For the for, for the navigator, the pilots, the cockpit, there's a flight plan. And the agenda is to land the plane safely in the in the place that they're landing. For the people in the cabin, there's instructions also before takeoff and landing. But it's about what they need to do. Buckle up, prepare themselves for takeoff and for landing and so on. The Arizal Siddur is writing to those select few who are in the cockpit. They see the panorama. They, 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 and therefore, the end of their journey is really once the plane has landed. The beginning is preparations for takeoff. So the Arizal starts off with telling us what's, what, telling those people what's the agenda and how we're going to be doing it. And then the end, the Shmini Atzeres and Chaser, well, that's the end of the cycle of the year, the way all the energies have to flow. <coughs> However, and back to the inside of the Sikha, and the Siddur al Terebe, which is written in a way it should be applicable to everybody, According to the to the Arizal's secrets, but those are not spelled out here. So, for example, those uh, I mean, uh, you know, the Rebbe and, and you know those Sadikim, followers of the Al Rebbe, they're reading the Al Rebbe Siddur with all the knowledge of the Arizal's of all the other Siddur of Arizal's with the Kavonis and so on. But the Alter Rebbe, the actual Alter Rebbe Siddur is written for us all in a way that it, we can all approach it. We, according to the secrets of the Arizal, but we just, we don't, we, don't inte- we don't have those meditations in mind. So it's spelled out in a way that it's relevant to us. And Avoid of the person um, both in, in, in creating the Cheftza of the davening. It depends. We need to we need to work on ourselves to feel uh, that feeling to Hashem when we daven, that we're entreating and imploring Him. And also, we need to do what we need to do to prepare ourselves for davening, to put ourselves in a mindset to remove our minds from other things and be mindful of standing for Hashem. All of that is about what a person needs to do. So, when you're in the in that mode, speaking to the so to speak the masses, the people in the main cabin of the plane. So it's about speaking to the, the, the tefillah the way it is from the perspective of a person's avodah. So first, al Rebbe starts out with about getting up. A person should prepare himself by getting up at midnight. In that way, you enter the zone of being a true servant of Hashem. And the grand finale of tefillah is not about um, which has to do with the holiness and sanctity of the day. It's about the, the grand finale is which is Really, in a sense, saying the whole content of Sfirah Sa'im is about the person's involvement. He has to know what day it is. He's counting and refining himself, right? So that's really the beginning and the end of the Alter Rebbe Siddur is really all about Avedis Sadr, that's speaking to all of us. We're not there in the cockpit understanding all the Kavanas and how, what we need to do and bring down. And 
It's about us turning to Hashem. So you could think, Zion, that seems to be a little bit demeaning, perhaps. So, so that means all we're doing is counting days. We don't have a, uh, we don't, we're not really, you know, we're not part of the pilots, we're not part of the big shots, we're, we're movers and shakers, we're just, uh, you know, go, keep the guys in the dark. They're not doing anything anyway. No, 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 no. Svir Saimar actually tells us a, a, an incredible thing. More than we see in any other Aveda. You see, when it comes to to keeping Shabbos in Yom Tov, so Yom Tov, yes, Yom Tov is dependent on the Bnei Yisrael, because they have to make, the Beisden has to make, when is Rosh Chodesh, according to that is Yom Tov, but that's a Beisden. That's the community. And then we daven, and we bring as a community, once Beisden is established, when the Yom Tov is, we bring down the Kedusha into the world, based on our observing of the Yom Tov. Shabbos, Hashem has already instilled Shabbos into the, embedded Shabbos into the cycle of creation. Through us, Lekadshay, we remember the Shabbos to make it holy, we say Kiddush and Tvilis, but that's the collective of the Bnei Yisrael. Sfirsa Eimer is a mitzvah that's on the individual. Through the Sfirsa Eimer of every individual Jew, not just through the Beisden, it's not a mitzvah on the Beisden to count, it's a mitzvah on every Jew to count. That creates our Shavuos. It's, it, and Shavuos, remember, is not a date. A date is fixed by Beisden. We know that Shavuos technically could be on the 5th, 6th, or 7th of Sivan. It's the 50th day of the person's count of the Yomer, right? Um, so therefore, in Shavuos you see, and, and by the way, we know the famous Sikh of the Rebbe, that uh, the, technically if a person crosses the date line, he has to keep counting his Sfer Yomer, and his Shavuos, 50th day, will become Shavuos. So you really see the the, indiv- the effect of the, the power of the individual to bring down Hashem, down, that he's moving and shaking. And in some ways, the Yom Tov of Shavuos, which is being created by the counting of the individual, and if you're unfamiliar with this concept, you'll be, you might, you'll be blown away, that technically, it, and we try not to cross the date line during Sefer Sa'imer, but if one does, then either one comes to the 50th day, a day later, or a day earlier, that will become the personal Shavuos for that person. Go and speak to your local Chabad rabbi to understand the details exactly, but Means you're cre- now. What have you created by your personal count? A shavuos. Shavuos is in a way even more kedusha, even 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 more stringent than the other yom tovim. Why? Because shavuos doesn't come because of a doubt. Here's a f- fascinating thing. Why do we keep two days yom tov outside Israel? Because let's say the holiday of Pesach is the fifteenth day of Nisan. You need to know when the first day of Nisan was, and that's decided by the Beis Din because they would make Rosh Chedesh based on the sighting of the moon. So, you need to know when the moon was sighted, when the base didn't proclaim Rosh Chedesh. In Israel, they knew. They knew when the 15th day, they knew within two weeks, they would know when is the 15th day. When was the real first day of Nisan? When's day 15? However, outside Israel, they didn't have the information. When in doubt, say maybe it's today, maybe it's tomorrow. Say two days Yom Tov. <clears throat> Shavuos is not a date in the calendar. It doesn't matter when the Beisdin made the Rosh Chedesh Sivan. It's 50 days from Pesach. By the time 50 days from Pesach comes, that's already more than 60 days since they decided when the first of Nisan is. By then, they know when we, everybody in the world would know when Pesach was, the real first day of Pesach. So just count 50 days from that day and do Shavuos. You should have one day of Shavuos. There's no doubt. And the Halacha says, Taka, there's no doubt. But Chachamim said, it's not a Suffolk, but we're not going to create a distinction between the different holidays. You do two days. So in a way, the second day of Yom Tov is more definitive. It was never about a doubt. It was always the Chacham said, do it. So the, what we are bringing down through our personal count, a holiday which in a way is even more Kedusha, when it's, when it's more stringent, it means there's more Kedusha, so to speak. And that's, achi- that's being achieved by the individual act of the Yid. So don't feel bad, in other words, when we say we're not bringing you into the whole picture of all the Kavanas. But actually, your, you, you, your deed achieves amazing things. And this, says the Rebbe Ches, is also highlights the general advantage and greatness of the Aveda of a person through davening. The concept of davening is not just to bring down into the world what was already there. In other words, 
so to speak, it got stuck. There's already been an allocation. It's in the pipeline, but somehow there's a blockage in the place. You're going to unblock the pipes. No, tefillah is more than that. He rots him. We say in tefillah, may it be Hashem's will. In other words, if it's not there in the works, we're davening, create a new will. And that, the, the, the fulfillment of tefillah comes down actually into the world and changes the reality. For example, perhaps somebody was ill, but it can come and change the cells. Now the cells become healthy. There was no rain. If you ask the weather forecaster, in the, in, in the embedded cycle of nature, there didn't seem to be any rain. Davin for rain, Hashem could create a new reality where rain will come. Teda mitzvahs, in general, doesn't have that creating something new. The, the, the parchment of the tefillin doesn't get changed because you put it on the head and now, bingo, you did a mitzvah. You brought kedush in the world, but you don't see where you've brought something new, totally new. There's a change in the reality of the world through that, as explains in time. Tess. So just like the Pnimis of Tefillah. Um, the way that... Uh, oh, now let's also look at the way that al explains the Pnimis in the Tefillah. And there too we'll see the deep connection, the intrinsic connection between Tefillah and Sefirah Sa'imah. The al explains in the that Tefillah is not counted as part of the 613 mitzvahs. Because Tefillah is the intention, is the kavan of all of Torah mitzvahs. It's the omud ha-mekayim kol ha-tayag mitzvahs dugma shut It's that which, um, the, 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 the pillar, which sustains all of the other mitzvahs, just like the spinal cord. When we're counting all the limbs of a person, the spinal cord is not counted. But the spinal cord is most important, as we all know. It, has, it, it keeps the whole body upright and, and, and balanced. So tefillah is a similar thing, because the main thing of tefillah is that Hashem, who's higher than Hishtal Shlus, and we pray to Hashem, we pray to Hashem not to His Midas, the way He interacts with the world, the way Hashem is aloof from the world. And tefillah is about bringing down that into the world in a way of Hishtal Shlus. In other words, into the 18 brachas of Shemun Esau. The 18 brachas of Shemun Esau, we're asking for physical things. We're trying to bring down Hashem's aloofness into the reality of the world, that there should be a healing of the sick and should be uh, uh, rains at the proper time and so on. So this, we could say, is also emphasized by Sefer Sa'imah. Every year it says in Sefer Sa'imah something similar. Rebbein Shalelam, he says right after Sefer Sa'imah, we've done what you've said, and through this may there be drawn down a, an abundant flow into all the worlds. That's exactly what we're trying to do through tefillah. Drawing down an abundance, drawing down Hashem's energy into the into the into the kalim of the world. And we say more than that. We also say that what we're doing through Sisa Emir is we're trying to be Lasakin and Seinu to fix our souls and our Seinu and our spirits, Nishma Seinu and our Nishamas from every imperfection and every uh, you know blemish. So we're talking about bringing down the Shefarah of the abundant flow of Hashem into the details and into the vessels of our details, which is what Tfilah is, to change the reality of the created beings. Right? So there's a, a, a direct correlation with Sefer Sa'imer and Tefillah in that way as well. Now says the Rebbe finishes off with the Baruchas, through the fact that we're dealing with the laws of Sefer Sa'imer and we're talking about it. And through actually fulfilling the mitzvah Sefer Sa'imer in the best possible way that we can do it now, which is a remembrance of the Beis Mikdash. And we're discussing the laws of Sefer Sa'imer and Nigla and Pnimius. So this hurries up the fulfillment of the uh, hastens, the fulfillment of the prayer, which we say right after Sefer Sa'imer, may Hashem bring us back the Aved of the Beis Mikdash to its place. And we should be able to do the mitzvah in its proper way. We may have a speedily in our days. Mamish amen sela in a way of an of a uh, unbroken continuum. Thank you.